<laughs> hello, 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 everyone. This is Nick Zatuni from Next Gen Daycare here to continue our video about the common needs of children. In our previous video, I gave you guys about six or seven uh, needs that every child from every age has. And today, we're gonna finish it up, this list, just to give you a full understanding of why children need what we're mentioning here and giving a little bit of a real life example or at least an explanation to make your life easier, right? So let's get started. So continuing the list, very important for children of all ages to have a very nice, in a way, environment, okay? And when we're talking about the environment, talk about home, childcare, school, if your child is a little older, right? But when I say nice, it's uh, we can break it down that nice from many other items. For example, that environment needs to have a hint of encouraging. The environment also needs to be very supportive of children, okay? Also, children need to be able to predict, needs to have that routine, that understanding, and even some level of control, if you ask me, on that environment, that routine, and the people that are around that environment, all right? Of course, children need to be accepted in that environment, and they need to have some level of satisfaction. So let's break it down quickly here just so you can uh, navigate with me why those things are very important. All right, so here's the deal. We need to encourage our children to, you know, be whomever they want to be because their brains still, again, in development. They're still trying to understand how the world works. And in terms of development, it is much more important to encourage children to give them the capability to dream, to try to develop themselves because they will be then feel not only the little bit of a nudge, but the need of trying new things. And that's how they grow. That's how they develop into everything else that's available for them, right? If you don't encourage your child, your child will never have that drive to try new things, do new things, learn new things that will be very important in that early stage of life, all right? And then, of course, with that learning, with that encouraging, we also have to support children. It's not like do it yourself. Most children don't even know how to do things themselves because we, as adults, we need to teach them. The metaphor that I like to use for it is that children's brains are basically blank canvas. And we, as adults, as caregivers, as parents, we are the ones who are going to be helping them to paint on that canvas and if you encourage your child to go out there to try new things it's like the canvas is going to be full of beautiful colors of different drawings but if you don't and if you don't support then the child will basically do the same thing that the child is comfortable with over and over and over and that overall it's not really good for a expensive development as i like to call it all right so now, why do children need routines? Why do they need that predictability, that control over things, right? It's a, a little bit of a, a fight, an internal fight, right? Our brains as learning machines, they like to understand the environment. They like to understand the patterns, the standards, and then that becomes their routine to the point where your brain is not on alert mode all the time, right? learning, going to a new location. Every person deals with it different, of course, but it's a stressful situation for our brains, especially for children's brains who don't have the tools to even self-modulate properly or understand what things, uh, why things are different at that point in time, right? So predictability, that sense of control allows children's brain to be, after they get used to the routine, of course, into a state of rest, into a state of non-stress. And that will, of course, allow them to explore and learn more in that environment, right? And acceptance and satisfying interaction is pretty good. 
right? Because that will encourage children to be who they want to be. And if they don't have any satisfaction to any environment, why would they stay in that environment? If the environment is not nice, happy, interesting, children's brain will be in a constant state of stress. And we already talked about that in our previous videos, right? So again, encouraging, supportive, predictable, and accepting with a hint of satisfaction in whatever environment the child will be in. All right. So the next one is also a thing that child care overall, Alberta, BC, whatever you want to go here in Canada, they push forward to. That is outdoor experiences. Okay. The outdoors overall, if you ever go to a child care facility like ours, we have neighborhood walks, we have uh, playgrounds and so on. And those are things that would allow children to see and understand how vast is the world. It's uh, a practice, let's put it that way, that will allow them to develop themselves physically and play in a different environment, but also that little bit of a, a brain experience where children will see that there is a big world out there, something to explore. There are many more stimuli outside from cars, sounds, new children, people walking around that may start something in your child, right? And that's why outdoors experiences are so important versus just staying indoors all the time. And let's be honest, not long ago, we did have COVID. And I think if you're a parent, you know how uh, not optimal that environment was for your children development. So going outside, playing, doing physical activities, and having that stimulation will be very good for your child, all right? Now, next thing here, very important too, is to have people that are always around the child. That creates, sorry, let me rephrase here, there, the same people, right? So again, children like having that sense of control, that sense of routine, so having key people, significant people around the child will actually help them not only to see those people as maybe something to, you know, look up to like parents when good parenting is at place, right? But also people from outside your family, just so the child is exposed to different ways of looking at life, of doing things, of learning things, right? I remember my childhood, my parents, they liked to have many friends over all the time. And I got in touch with many different types of people, all the way from, you know, business entrepreneurs, from people that were, of course, unfortunately, in a, in a poor spectrum of our society. And that allowed me to understand the spectrum itself. I had a fairly good childhood, right? My family wasn't super wealthy, but by understanding that there is that variation, that spectrum, I was able to even navigate better because I could look up to my parents and see that my parents acted different from, for example, the rich people versus the people that were uh, financially challenged. All right. So having key people from different styles that would allow your child to learn from, very good. All righty. Next one here is the classic, we need to give children the opportunity to understand that the world is not happening around them. It's not spinning around them. That is not just because they want that they could get it. In childcare, we basically call that a little bit of a guidance and discipline. And I know here in childcare overall, that's a, a very a uh, hot debate topic about guidance versus discipline. Some people believe that discipline needs to be a little bit more stern. Some people believe that guidance has nothing to do with discipline. Some people that, like me, believe that they're deeply intertwined, right? But the idea for all of that is, yes, your child needs to understand that there is a fine line between you showing what you want to show and then you let the child take in and understand whatever they want to understand out of it. That's a little bit of a guidance and discipline where you need to be a bit more strict and create those limits, those boundaries for your child. Uh, my mom used to say to me back in the day that uh, for us, 
she decided to try to get to try her best to give roots and wings. And now working with children, I understand that the root part is the whole idea of, as we mentioned before, the courage, encouragement, the support, allowing us to understand that there is a place there that we can always come back to, but wings to spread and go elsewhere. So it's a bit of a constriction, but at the same time with the willingness to fly. And that's where we uh, keep here with this idea of guidance and discipline. It's important to encourage, it's important to tell your child, let's go this way. And your child has to have its own processing power of it. But it's also very important to say, this is the limit. This is what we accept in this family, in this house. Those are the rules with discipline. All right. And be very mindful, parents, that we need to think about not only the age, but the developmental stage. The same strategy that you use on a two-year-old will not work as good as in a four-year-old or even older, all right? So constant adaptation, I guess that's the key word here, all right? Next, we want the children to have opportunities to develop in a positive way, having a little bit of self-understanding, self-esteem, understanding that there will be someone there that will you have a pat in the back, which talks again, uh, we go back to being encouraging and supportive of the child, right? But this is not only in an environment, this is for the child within him or herself, right? So it's not a situation where your child out of the blue, like, oh, I am the best play soccer player in the world. And you look at the child, say like, my friend, you're not Cristiano Ronaldo, you know, or Messi. You can't keep saying those things because not only you are damping a little bit of the child's dreams, but you are preventing the child from developing that self-esteem that usually comes from, again, accepting and encouraging the children in whatever fantasies or ideas they create in their mind. And I know it sounds a little bad because eventually that's going to, the road is going to break them, right? But Think of the alternative. If you don't give your children the opportunity to feel good about themselves, they will never grow to that level and then tone it down when the world breaks them. All right? So if you don't encourage them, they're always going to be here in a very basic line. While if you allow them to grow and think, they're going to go all the way up and then life's going to tone them down a bit. So a little sad, but... That's how the world works, unfortunately. All righty. Last one here. Uh, actually, the second last. We need to give children a very opportunities for physical development. And we're talking about any kind of activity that goes from gross motors to fine motor skills. So as a child, my parents put me into soccer, basketball, judo, swimming, all those kinds of sports. And of course, if that costs money for you and you cannot afford it, there are free alternatives that you can do it at home, right? So for example, if you just allow your child to play with Lego, that works with fine motor skills. If you allow your child to just keep running and you run with them around the park that's close to home, you are developing the gross motor skills. So understanding the gross and fine and tailoring both activities that can even intertwine if you have the chance are very important for children and the last one here time for play and i cannot stress how important play is in children's lives it allows them to understand societal roles allows them to mimic you parents allows them to go into their brain world of play and all the things that are happening and to make them real at least for that moment play on its own allow your children to be better and that's what we want for our children in the end right i believe there's a video in our channel that goes in depth talking about how important play is but children that have time to play have much better outcomes than children that did not have time to play. So if you're a parent and if you believe that your child 
doing silly things there. It's not helping them to learn, to grow, to do something better. I'm sorry, but you are wrong. Allowing the brain of a child to expand, to try different things, even if it's in a play role, allow for better development, allow for the child to test himself, herself, and the environment surrounding it, allows them to mimic adults. And it is one, if not the richest experiences that a child can have in childhood. Alrighty. So keep in mind, of course, there are different needs as your child grows, but those 13 items from the first video and the second video here are ones that are fairly important. And we here from Next Gen Daycare strongly encourage you parents to follow those to the letter as much as you can. Alrighty. I hope you like this video. Please don't forget to hit like, subscribe to our channel, share that love with us. And if you have any questions about any of those items that we mentioned, please leave a comment. I will make sure to answer and we can start a conversation that hopefully will be very helpful to you. And with that in mind, I'll see you in the next video.